is really poignant to me. The first parent we'll meet is single mum, Vilja. Her first child, Nikolai, died as a baby. She went on to have two more sons, Lauri and Oscar, and then 20 months ago, a fourth baby boy called Talvi. He was born at 25 weeks gestation, but sadly passed away when he was just four weeks old. The first couple of weeks after Talvi died, um, I retreated, if you like, and just went home with the boys to try to restore any form of normality in their lives. I think in the situation, it's about surviving and turning it into an experience that can make you stronger. We began filming with Vilja the day that Talvi was born. She wanted to spend as much time with him as possible, and we saw her meet him for the first time. Hello, my darling, beautiful boy. Gosh, he looks strong. He looks so strong, it's not actually as frightening as I thought it would be. Parents respond in very different ways to having a very sick baby. Some parents want right from the outset to know everything. They want to be involved in everything and they want to do everything they possibly can. Other parents almost withdraw. Um, they don't want to know, they don't want to take part. They want to actually distance themselves from their baby, particularly if the baby's very ill, probably as a defense mechanism. You don't want to get too close when you think you might be going to lose the baby. Part of what the staff have to do in a neonatal unit is try to encourage as much contact with parent, of parents with their baby as possible. If things should go badly, if parents should lose their baby, one of the things that actually helps in dealing with it, that dealing with the loss of their baby, is the memories they manage to get. Because those are all they'll have to remember. Every moment I was with him was the best time. I found it nice when um, Talvi just opened his eyes and looked at me when I held his hand. Even if it was one eye, I still really liked that. Although Vilja felt it was important for the family to have as much contact with Talvi as possible, having a very sick and vulnerable baby was a difficult experience for everyone. Vilja learned that there is support available at the hospital. She met with Becky Dorr, a clinical psychologist on the neonatal unit. As I said, if the door's open, that means you just mm, come on in. in. Oh, oh, fantastic. I'm here doing something and you can just pop your head in. Thank you details. so much. That's such a support. Okay. And good to know that you're here. Becky's support is available for all the family. When parents come onto the unit, they might like to access some emotional support. Um, staff who would be available to offer that to parents are people like psychologists who may work on the unit, some nurses who've had additional counselling training, um, some non-medical professions such as uh, child psychotherapists or family therapists, and there are, there are, there are also national organisations that are able to offer support to so organisations such as Bliss that have a really good website, um, and they also have sort of telephone services where you can speak to parents who've had a similar journey or professional advisors who can offer you advice. Sadly, after three weeks, Talvi's condition worsened. He had heart surgery, but this did not bring the improvement that Vilja had hoped for. She had to face the devastating reality that there was nothing more the doctors could do to save her baby. Talvi was baptised this morning. It was really very moving, very lovely. This is the lovely certificate with all his names and the date and time and the reverend. Parents do tell us that it's very important that they find a way, their own way, that is meaningful to them to say goodbye to their baby and that will be very different from parent to parent. Some people will choose to have a service that includes family and friends to have some acknowledgement of their baby's life and death. For other people, they may decide just to do something very privately on their own. 
and there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's important that families are able to do what is right for them. Vilia invited her close family and friends to say goodbye to Talvi and offer each other support. Vilia's older sons had the chance to hold Talvi for the last time if they wanted to. If mum had come back and said that, um, oh, by the way, he's dead, and I wasn't there, I'd be really annoyed because I'd have to be there for him to go, because he's my brother. Vilia decided she wanted to hold Talvi in his final hours. On the, the evening that Talvi passed, I just wanted to take the boys home. So I, was, I think I was still in autopilot at that point, to some degree. So I was able to get us home and feed us, and uh, we just lay on my bed. I had one boy in each arm, and we just fell asleep crying, exhausted. When parents lose a baby, the, the most common question that I'm asked is why? And unfortunately, quite often, there isn't an answer to that question. And it's really, really hard to make sense of the experience. In the service that we offer, we're able to offer space so that we can ask all the whys and we can think about all the options that, that may help us to understand the whys. But inevitably, um, parents quite often go away realising that there isn't a concrete answer to that question. And it's something that over time, they are more able to accept. For Vilia, this was her second experience of bereavement. Grieving for Talvi was very different from the loss of her first son, Nikolai. Nothing about it was the same. I now had two children and I was going through the grieving process. I had food to cook, beds to change, bills to pay, petrol to put in the car. Being a single parent and not having anybody to look after them, there were things that we had to do together. Going to register the birth of Talvi and then move into the next desk to register the death of Talvi. I, I came to the point where I realised that it was time to arrange a funeral, send-off, celebration for Talvi. Um, at that point, I felt pretty weak. Um, I didn't know what would be best for the children. And when I spoke to Becky, she really helped me by suggesting that we, you know, discuss it together as a family. It can be quite overwhelming to have to think about, you know, things sort of on a practical level, but also on an emotional level as well. The choices you make may or may not involve religious elements. Only you know what's right for you and your family. Vilia and the boys decided they would like a religious ceremony. So we have come together today to remember with gratitude the short life on earth of Talvi, whom we loved and who God has taken to himself, and in whose loving arms he is now safe. What we know about grief is that it is a process and over time, of course, what parents have to do is somehow adjust to life without their baby. And in learning to live with the tragedy of their child's death, they may need to access different forms of support at different times. For some families, for some parents, they find it very helpful to come together with other parents, to actually be in a group, to talk with people who've had a similar experience to them. But again, within those experiences, and certainly in the groups that we run here at the Child Bereavement Charity, we're very aware of the uniqueness of individual experiences. How I love to watch the clouds peacefully, peacefully drifting by. My grief presented in many different ways. Some of them were delayed after dealing with everything that had to be dealt with practically. I uh, developed panic attacks. I managed to find various helplines that I was able to call um, whenever I had a moment to call them. If the children were out playing, 
and I could just ring up and uh, although I was repeating the same story it wasn't it was about hearing somebody just say you're not going mad you're not going mad and it's perfectly normal and it's understandable with what you've been through